Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mengs and today I welcome you guys to one of the most requested let's plays that I have. Today we are checking out the legendary Project Ember hack. So what is Project Ember? It's basically Fire Emblem 6 reimagined and improved in many ways. Uh, this is not a new concept. Plenty of people have tried to improve FE6 over the years and uh, I've tried out some of them. I remember playing the Redux patch back on my channel many years ago. Most of the attempts to reimagine FE6 have not been very well received. There have been some good ones, but most of them have been really bad. This is like the first hack that I've looked at that I've gone like, oh, wow, these guys actually know what they're doing. So yeah, we're going to be taking a look at it. Not only that, I'm going to be doing full story. To my knowledge, the story isn't changed that much. It's mostly gameplay. But uh, I haven't voice acted FE6 since the very first Let's Play that I did on this channel, so I figured, you know what? It's time. I feel like voice acting a little bit. <clears throat> so, oh man, I get nostalgic just looking at this. Man and Dragon once coexisted in harmony. However, man shattered that harmony with a sudden onslaught. A great war now known as the Scouring was fought for dominion of the land. Losses were tremendous for both sides. And in this war, the very laws of nature itself were twisted and distorted bringing chaos and unease. Defeated and humbled, the dragons disappeared from the realm. Mankind then began to rebuild and repopulate their newly won land. A millennium has passed since then. If you don't want to view the story, I'll post a timestamp that jumps straight to the gameplay. Um, but if I say I, I do full story, then I intend to do the full story, so let's go. I don't think this has changed, but I want to do it anyway. After defeating the dragons, the humans of Alib quickly spread their culture and civilization to the farthest reaches of the continent. In the west lies the kingdom of Etruria, which is widely considered to possess the most refined Dorcas. <laughs> refined culture in all of Alib, sorry. Uh, old habit. The kingdom of Bern, with its powerful military and logical, pragmatic people, is located on the other side of the continent in the east. These are the two most powerful nations in Alib, with the weaker nations situated between them. These smaller lands are... The Lysian League, whose numerous territories are independently ruled by a number of Marquesses that are bound by a vow of allegiance. Ilia, where the people orderly till the frozen soil, and many become mercenaries to earn money to survive. And Sake, where the various clans ride through the plains on horseback. Although there were occasional clashes between these nations, the majority of the people of Alib lived in peace. That peace, however, was not to last. King Sephiel of Bern has commanded his forces to conquer the entirety of Alib. Bern's armies first attacked Sakai and Ilya, ruthlessly massacring all who opposed them. Now Bern is mounting a merciless invasion into Lycia. Pharah is a territory of Lycia known for its beauty and honorable lords. Pharah's Lord Roy was in Ostia, Lycia's largest territory when the invasion began. He had been sent to study to become the next Marcus II of, of the Pharah territory. However, the sitting Marcus and Roy's father, Eliwood, who has been ill, has sent for Roy to return to lead Pharah's soldiers in defending against Burn. Marcus's Hector of Ostia leads the Council Law of Lords in Lycia. At the same time, Eliwood sent for Roy. Marcus's Ostia's daughter, Lelina, was in Farah visiting Eliwood, who is Marcus Ostia's longtime friend and confidant. Upon receiving his father's message, Roy hurries home, taking with him his vassals, and Bors, a knight from Ostia who is responsible for Lelina's safety. The story begins when Roy reaches the outskirts of Farah. So, yeah, so, so far as I can tell, the story is completely unchanged. Um, but hey, it's the new the icons are new and the graphics are new, so that's nice. Let's start with chapter one. Good old chapter one. Boss! <laughs> They've all hidden themselves inside the castle. Ha! Huh, even Ellie with the greatest knight in Lycia is no match for an illness, it seems. Hee hee hee! You were right when you said there wouldn't be many soldiers. They're all getting ready to defend against Burn. Of course I was right. I'm always right, you fool. But reinforcements could be here any minute. All right, you curse, listen up. Kill everyone in the castle while we still got time. Then we can waltz out of here with all the loot. Hey, hey, castles ain't the only places with loot. Let's go ransack the villagers and take everything they got. <laughs> Lord Elliewood, we are under attack by bandits from Mount Bohm. Uh, I understand. Thank you, Merlinus. Blast it. Were I not in this pitiful state, I would take care of them all myself. Lord Elliewood? 
Lelina, you must hide yourself. This castle is going to become a war zone. No, my lord, I can fight. <laughs> Don't be absurd. You're level one. I couldn't face Hector if something happened to you in my own castle. My father, but... That's going to be alright. Roy should be here any moment, so we just need to hold out until then. He'll drive off these dastards. Merlinus, send a messenger to Roy to let him know of the current situation. We need his help. Y yes my lord. Ah, there he goes. No, it's, it's Lance who rides, right? Oh god, there's some mercenary there, that's new. Oh, new Armor Knight models. Oh, it's Lance, what's the matter? Uh, why are you in such a hurry? Lord Roy, bandits have appeared and are attacking the castle as we speak. No, is the Marcus unharmed? He's inside defending against the bandits attack, but I don't know how long he can last with his illness. Excuse me, Lance, is it? Is Lady Lelina safe? You must be a knight of Ostia. Lady Lelina's in the castle. She should be alright. She's with Lord Elwood after all, but he can't last forever. No, I shouldn't have let Lelina go to the castle before me. Lord Roy! Oh, best character. Regret won't solve anything. We must retake the castle. Lord is right. We must make haste. Wow, his armor looks a lot better. Yes, you're right. This is no time for despair. Very well. To arms, then! Our target is the castle. We must rescue everyone! Man, I haven't voiced that intro in forever. You know, when I first did this Let's Play on the channel way back, I think I did like 40 takes trying to get this intro nailed down. Now I did it in my first take. Progress. If only my skills at Fire Emblem had increased at the same rate. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So I know a little bit about this patch, but I've been trying not to watch other people play it because I don't want to get spoiled. But uh, bas basically, it's a massive rebalancing of Heavy 6. Uh, I'm playing on hard mode. I know there is a Maniac mode option available. I decided not to play it because it sounds ridiculous. But I do believe that hard mode is somewhat rebalanced. I know axes are more accurate, and I know that the characters, for the most part, are a lot more balanced. So starting off with Roy right here. God, the new graphics look really nice. I can already tell that his bases are improved. Uh, and also, we're going to be looking at their growth rates, and I've also included their original growth rates from FE6, so we can see how much they've changed. And as you can see right here, Roy has gotten a massive buff in pretty much all areas by the looks of things. He's much faster, got a lot more strength. Um, his defense and resistance are pretty similar, but and his luck growth is the same, but he's just got a massive boost in strength, skill, and speed. I do also think he promotes a lot earlier in this hack, so that's definitely, like, some of the main complaints about Roy right out of the window right there. He is apparently pretty damn good. He also has 7 move, which is ridiculous. He runs as fast as your Cavaliers. I am very excited to see how Roy performs against these early game pirates and bandits because, well, let's just say no, normally he does not do well at all, but this, now this is something I like to see. But before we do anything else, let's uh, change some settings around. Oh my god, these look nice. Oh, I think we're just gonna go with the traditional blue for this one. So, I, I still don't think it's a good idea for Roy to attack here, because there's still a lot of fighters, but I can tell that they're a lot weaker than they normally are in hard mode. FE6 has a very rocky start. Here's the boss of the chapter, Damas. He seems to be roughly equally strong. However, I'm noticing that all the enemies have zero luck. This is a great uh, addition. Enemies with no luck is just makes the game a lot less tedious. It makes the hit rates a lot less shaky, which I think is nice. Uh, let's uh, check out the rest of Roy's posse. I'm excited to see Volt right here, and oh my god, 10 base speed Volt, yes. I also know that bows are 2-3 range. I'm gonna hold my verdict on this until I actually see it in action. This is something I usually don't like, but maybe I'll actually end up liking it now. I don't know, it depends on how the game... It depends on how the game is, because sometimes when archers have increased range, it's very tedious, because it means you cannot counter enemy archers with your 1-2 range units. So we'll see how this goes. Anyway, let's take a look at Volt's growth rates, shall we? Let's see if they buffed my boy. I can already see that he's gotten a buff to his bases. Um, so, uh, yeah, it seems like they've uh, buffed his skill growth. Uh, it's got a minor buff to strength as well. And his, uh, his defense is a little bit increased as well. They also gave him uh, a little bit more hit points, so he's very bulky now. But with 10 base speed, I think he might actually double some of the enemies, so this is gonna be great. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how Volt's gonna be in this in this hack, because I think he's gonna be really good. Um, let's uh, take a look at Alan. Uh, Alan, of course, is a really good Cavalier, one of my favorites. And uh, let's take a look at his growth rates. Uh, massive buff to his strength right now. That is absolutely insane. 15% increased strength growth. 
Uh, his skill and speed is the same. Lockrolf has been reduced a little bit, actually. That's interesting. And he seems he seems to have been slightly buffed with defense and resistance as well. So, uh, how's his weapon ranks, though? D and E. He comes with a steel sword. I'm pretty sure he did not do that at base. So, that's interesting. He can actually attack with a steel sword now. Does he get slowed down by it? He actually can wield it exactly without speed penalty. So, that's really nice. I also noticed that he has a class here, Light Cav. I do believe that Cavaliers are... Uh, uh, come in two um, forms right now. You got the sword and lance calves, and then if, I think you got the axe and lance calves. I'm not sure, uh, but I think I think that's how Project Ember has done things. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at Lance. So here he is, really digging his new portrait. Man, he looks good. 11 base speed. That's crazy. That is absolutely amazing. And uh, let's take a look at his growth rates. Here they are. Seems like they've stayed roughly the same. He has a lot more skill. And he's a lot faster. He's got 60% speed growth now. That is pretty insane. The original Alan and Lance did have... They were pretty similar. The, the, the differences between them were very small. But here I can see that Lance is definitely the cab focusing on speed. Whereas Alan is the cab focusing on strength. That was the case in FE6 too. But their their growth rate differentiates. was They were like 5% different. It was practically no difference between them at all. Here I can see they've done an effort to differentiate themselves from each other. So Lance is very much the fast cab, and Alan is very much the strong cab, which I think is nice. It's a nice balance. Uh, his defense and rest growths are... or his defense growth is a lot lower than Alan's, too, I can see. Or a little bit lower, so he's probably going to be a little bit frailer. Um, so let's take a look at... I'm going to save the best one for last, because Boris is the one I'm, I'm by far the most excited about. Here's Marcus, and uh, he looks to be pretty similar to his old-school self. I think his bases are a little bit higher. Uh, of course, he comes with this iconic Silver Lance. He can use that at base, which is re really nice. But let's see if they buffed his growth rates any. Because... Hmm. Okay, they actually have. Quite quite significantly, do 50% skill growth. Wow, that's quite a lot. His strength and speed are higher as well. Although not by much. His growth rates are still low compared to the rest of your units. But they're a lot better in Project Ember, as I can see. So he might... He'll, he'll keep up a little bit better. I actually think Marcus, or FE6 Marcus, is one of the more balanced Jagans in the series, so I don't really think you need to buff him by a lot, but it's interesting to see. Let's see how he keeps up with the rest of the enemies. And of course, this is by far, uh, as I said, the change that I'm most excited about, because Boris not only has one extra move, as you can see right here, but he can now also use swords, which is fantastic. I love this so much. This is going to make him so much more useful against the Brigands. Of course, Boris, one of the biggest weaknesses he has in Vanilla FE6 is that he gets doubled a lot, and then he also faces Weapon Triangles, so he's just not very good in the first few chapters. So giving him kills is really hard. Um, but let's, let's take a look at his growth rates and see how they buff my boy. So, um, yeah, looks like they've upped his strength considerably. Skill, too, and uh, speed is actually the same. Boris was always pretty fast for an Armor Knight, funnily enough. And uh, they've actually nerfed his luck growth. And his uh, defense is the same, his resistance is a little bit higher. 14 con, was he always that big? I actually do not remember Vanilla Boar's con, but that's nice. That means he can use the Steel Blade without taking penalties. That's kind of cool. So yeah, with that out of the way, let us uh, play this first map and see how it uh, plays out. So uh, I always like to attack with Marcus first here and just uh, soften this guy up and then give this kill to Volt. Ooh, new animations. Very sexy. Fighters looking different, too. Oh, wow, he actually got hit. Yeah, so this is a thing. Um, when you buff hit rate of Axis in FE6, like so many of these patches tend to do, which, by the way, is a change that I agree with, uh, what you also do... Oh, my God, Volt doubles at base. Look at this madman. Oh, my God, he's good now. I mean, better than he was. We all know Volt is the best unit in the game. Um... When these FE6 balance patches try to buff hit rates of Axis, they also... Some of them tend to forget that that's the weapon type that every enemy in the early game uses, so you're actually going to make it a lot harder as well when you buff the hit rate of Axis. Because the Axe users don't really come until much later. I mean, you got Lot and Wade, but who the hell used those, right? Actually, Lot is the best unit in the game, so... You know, I need to, I need to remember that. But look at this. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Boars with a sword. Isn't that just beautiful? Also, there's a Merc there. I just noticed that. There's a Merc there. I don't want to fight him. I wonder if he charges me straight away. But look look at this! Boris with the sword! And he's good now. That's all he needed, was just Weapon Triangle advantage. Boris is a unit that I think 
actually, if it wasn't for Weapon Triangle disadvantage, he would have some potential in FE6, because having a tanky unit is important in that game. Now we have that. I do also believe that the Weapon Triangle is much more significant in Project Ember. I think it's, don't quote me on this, but I think it's 15% hit and avoid 2 damage, so it's even more consequential than it is in FE7 and 8. Which I like. I also think that you can check unit ranges. Yeah, global unit ranges, that's really nice. Uh, status, what's that? Okay, I'm just checking to see if there's any additional stuff that I have, I'm not aware of. Looks like we're good. So, uh, these guys are probably gonna go for Lance. I hope they won't end up killing him. Because I'm gonna place his buddy next to him. We'll see how that goes. Maybe I can bait one of them into going for Roy. That would actually be kind of nice. Curses. Reinforcements already. But they'll have to go through me to get into the castle. Best boss. I love Dumbass. He's the, he's the best. Okay, cool. I actually tricked one of them into going for Roy. So, it seems like Roy is still very much frail. I mean, we are playing on hard mode. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, these, these enemies are still pretty scary. I mean, I got a way more competent starting squad, and I can double on hard mode, which is something only Marcus does originally. Or at least, at least initially, until you get units like Deke. But uh, this definitely feels way more balanced than Vanilla FE6. But if I'm gonna do this, so I usually like to send Marcus up here, but he actually took a hit, which means that he, he has a small chance of dying. I like to take out this Archer with Marcus, I can use the Silver Lance to do this, but then I need to trade his weapon around. Because with a Lance, I do believe he will die here. So, I'm not a huge fan of this animation. I've seen it before. It's the same animation that uh, I, I do believe... Um, oh, what was it called? <laughs> the god I'm hacked that I played. The one with the ridiculously overpowered Lord. Uh, Adrian. Oh god, I forgot it. It's the... Um, oh god, what was the what was the hack called? Something something light. Yeah. Um, I do believe the Paladins used that kind of animations, and I'm not a huge fan of it. I actually really like the vanilla Paladin animations, I think they're really sexy. But, you know, everything is supposed to look brand new, so I guess it's not too big of a deal. So I think we'll do this. Wow, Lance doubling at base on hard mode. It's just something you almost never see. I also really like these updated fighter models. They look a lot more... They still look burly, but they don't look as cartoonish as the old fighters do. Which I think is nice. So, uh, I think we'll, we're going to let uh, Balls deal with uh, the Merc, I think. I kind of want to move Roy around, but I also want to kill this guy, so I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this. I need to kill I need to kill a lot of guys here. Uh, maybe I'll just... Hmm, if I move Roy in here, I'm, I'm worried he's going to die, so I don't really want to do that. So, I think I'm actually just going to keep Roy in the back. Oh boy, he will actually die here, what the hell. Um, okay. Can I one-shot him, maybe, with the steel? Ah, okay, that's actually kind of bad. I mean, Volt can kill him. Okay, I'm already in a bit of a pickle here. Come pickle, mangs! Alright, let's go. Let's shoot him down. Also really loving these uh, archer animations. They are so smooth. You see the quiver, like, dangles down. It's amazing. I really dig it. I suppose what I could do is I could put Roy here. And I could chug a Vulnerai, which, yeah, I do believe they restore 15 HP on use, which is fantastic. I love that. I always felt like 10 was not enough. 15 is a good number for Vulneraries, in my opinion. Alright, so what if Alan takes care of this guy, and then Bowles can take care of the other guy? And hopefully, that should work. By the way, in case some of you guys don't know why I call Boris Balls, <laughs> it's, um... It's an old story. I have a friend who played FE6, but he played it on the cartridge. We actually had to play it in Japanese, and he spoke a little bit of Japanese. And I remember he sent me a message one day, and he was like, Why do I have an armor knight called Bolzru? Is his name Bols? <laughs> and I thought that was really hilarious. Oh, stop it. Marcus. What the hell? Man, does Project Ember have the same bugged RN as FE6? I think it does. Okay, I think I'm safe now, because uh, I doubt there is a fighter who can deal this much damage to Marcus. So this is nice. One of the things I love about Marcus, especially on FE6 hard mode, is just how he perfectly gets enemies on low health. He doesn't kill them like Seth or Marcus does in FE7 and FE8. Uh, he leaves them exactly low enough for the rest of your scrubs to get the kill, which is fantastic Jagan design. This is how you should have a Jagan. He has the Silver Lance in case you need to kill something at full health. He can take out really dangerous enemies with that, but he also has an ar his Iron Sword, which is perfectly statted to bring brigands down to like 4 or 5 HP, so even 
weaklings like Roy can kill them, which is just fantastic. I love FE6 Marcus, he's such a well-designed unit. I'm curious to see how well he, he he holds up here. Normally Marcus tends to like, around Western Isles, like mid-Western Isles, late Western Isles, he does tend to drop off a little bit. Maybe he'll last a little longer with his new growth rates, although Marcus doesn't tend to get a lot of experience as units. I don't really think the increased growth rates are gonna play that big of a role, but we'll see. Anyway, Volt, Volt is fantastic. Like, having an archer that doubles from 2 to 3 range, I can already tell he's going to be an insanely useful unit. Um, so I'm really digging that. I, I do wonder how it's going to be fighting enemy archers, though. I have a feeling like it's going to be tedious as all hell. But yeah, I'm using Boris. Uh, I want to use all of these guys, honestly. Based on the little I've seen of Project Ember so far, it seems like every unit has a niche. In FE6, there's a lot of units that, um... How do we put this? They they just don't um, they don't do a lot. <laughs> they're kind of they're kind of filler units, you know. Uh, I get the sense that that's not that's no longer the case with Project Ember. I feel like every unit seems to have some sort of niche to them that makes them unique and stand out. So it's gonna be interesting to see every other unit. I feel like I have, I'm gonna have difficulties with the deployment slots. Also, let's make sure Roy doesn't die here. So I think he actually will die. <laughs> Uh, 19 damage, Roy has 5 defense, so that goes down to 14, but the weapon triangle reduces damage taken by 2, so the fighter should actually do 12 damage to Roy, so that's wonderful. I also gotta remember to go visit the Money Man. I also need to visit the houses. I need to voice the houses. This is gonna be a full story playthrough after all, so... Going... Also, FE6 no damage sound, best damage sound. Fight me, comment section, fight me. Um, let's see. Um, I also think javelins are, yeah, they're nerfed. They're they're buffed in terms of their hit rate, it, I think. I'm, I don't remember what javelins have in hit in terms of hit in FE6, but they only have three might now, which I think is a pretty nice way to balance them. They can still hit, they're still reliable, but they do a lot less damage. And I think in, in all the GBA games, you need some way of nerfing javelins and hand axes because they are really good. So that's kind of nice to see. Uh, I, again, when I look at Project Ember and the design decisions that have gone into it, it seems like the people who have uh, designed all of this, they really know Fire Emblem, and that's always a good thing because, you know, when I when I play most of these FE6 balance patches, it's quite clear to me that the people designing them don't really know a lot about balance. And if you don't know a lot about balance, it really shows when you make a hack, you know, when you got weird... You see weird design decisions everywhere. Every decision that I see in this hack, I like. It seems like a lot of thought has gone into it. A lot of like, they've really discussed these changes and asked themselves, how does how do we improve the gameplay, you know? And that's that's the question you should always ask yourself when you implement a gameplay change, you know? Some people, I, I, I remember reading some patch notes of one of those other countless FE6 balance patches and was like, uh, I gave a boast like a plus five might and plus 20 hit. I was like, why? Because archers suck. And I was like, but that's not a good, that's way overboard, man. Archers are bad in GBA games, it's true, but it's surprising how little you have to buff something to make it viable, you know? I might eat my word some Volt, I think maybe he's been buffed too much, but... I mean, archers are useful if they can kill stuff, and as you can see, Volt is clearly capable of killing stuff, and... You know, a good 1-2 range unit, or I guess it's, not, it's a good 2 range unit, or in this case, a good 2-3 range unit, is actually pretty damn good. So, you don't really need to buff the hell out of them. Anyway, I guess we're visiting houses now. Yeah, what I'm doing for the story, eh? Money is important! Oh, he doesn't say you anymore. That was like a big meme before. If you don't have any, you won't be able to replace your broken weapons. And you can't fight without your weapons. I missed the old translation, man. Okay, so what I like to do here is... Uh, should I just go and kill the archer? Nah, I'm gonna put Marcus here, I think. And then I'm going... Oh, so yes, as you can see right here, enemy archers also have 2-3 range, which is going to make them a hell of a lot more tedious to deal with. So it pretty much means that if you want to counter archers on enemy face, you have to use your own archer. So this is how echoes work. This is one of the re things I didn't like about bow knights and echoes, or Gaiden, is the fact that the only way to counter a bow knight was with another bow knight, or I guess a mage with a mage ring. If your mage could take the hits, which they very rarely could. So that was one of the things I really hated about the extra range that Echoes and Gaiden had. I didn't like it at all. I, d I don't like Archers and Gaiden. Uh, they're good, but they're tedious. Very tedious, because the enemies have a lot of them. And not being able to counter-attack all, all the time, it really gets old really quickly. 
Speaking of something that gets old quickly, uh... <laughs> Okay, yeah, so those guys are linked. Um, I wonder, can Marcus... Kinda wanna kill that archer? I don't know if it's safe to do this with Alan. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is... I'm gonna do this. I think... He's not on a... No, he's not on a forest, so... I'm gonna go down here with Marcus. I'm gonna murder this guy with a silver lance, and then I'm going to trade the weapon over so that Marcus actually has a sword, because the weapon triangle being buffed also means that enemies get buffed. That's something you have to keep in mind. So being at a weapon triangle disadvantage in Project Ember is is that's pretty tough. So you you don't wanna you don't you don't wanna give these guys a weapon triangle advantage. I'm pretty sure they'll kill Marcus that way. And uh, the question is right now, is it say I could have probably retreated with Alan. I didn't even think about that. I could send Roy up here. Uh, I need to make sure he doesn't die from this guy though. He will. He actually will die. So, uh, let's, uh, let's do this, and let's keep Bolt far in the way. So this is where global ranges really come in handy. Saves you so much time, man, I love it. Anyway, give me that 5,000 gold, cute village girl. Hey, are you knights going to the castle? I know this isn't much, but please accept this money on behalf of all of us. Use it well. I mean, 5,000 gold is a, a lot of gold for villagers, I, I'd say, but hey, I, I'm, no, I'm no expert at these things. Listen! If you want to do well in battle, you'd better use terrain wisely. For example, if you're in a forest, the trees will cover you. That'll teach enemies who they're dealing with. <laughs> yeah, standing behind a tree. There's no better way to assert dominance. Oh, don't do this to me, game. Don't do this. No, you're, we're not having Roy die in the first... I'm good at FE6. This is embarrassing. No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> God, dying on the first chapter, that's... uh. We don't want to go down that route. Okay, first Roy level up, let's go. Very good. Strength, speed, I mean, if Roy can level strength and speed early on, that's always pleasant. I have a feeling like this Roy is gonna be very good. Okay, very good. Ooh, okay. Man, these steel axes hit really hard, and 50% hit rate with steel axes, that's not something you'll see in vanilla FE6 most of the time. If an enemy has a steel axe equipped and you have a sword, they're not gonna have a 50% chance to hit you. Just not gonna happen. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll start softening up the boss with Marcus. Yeah, Damas always hits like a freaking truck. This this is not new. So, uh, can we kill this guy, though? Uh, if we do if we do an Iron Lance plus Roy, then maybe. I also think supports are greatly sped up. I'm not going gonna go out of my way to get supports. Uh, I feel like that's a little bit cheating, almost. I would do it in an Iron Man run. But, uh, but I think they build pretty quickly in Project Ember, so we might end up seeing some supports. So, uh, here we go. Now I'm gonna teach you guys a little bit of a trick about Volt. If you just attack the boss 5,000 times, you can cap out Volt in Chapter 1. Well, I'm okay with this. But yeah, I'm just gonna put Marcus here, and, uh, hopefully he won't get hit. We'll see. We're all doomed! Soldiers from Baron have crossed the border! They laid an awful attack! And even if the Allied Lord strike back, Lord Elliewood, he can't even stand anymore! Oh, he'll be fine, lady. It's just a little bit of the... It's just got a little bit of the coof. You bumbling idiots! You can't take down a few pathetic knights! Ooh, I just realized, Marcus actually has a brand new palette. That's really cool. Alright, so one more attack like that, we can rescue Marcus. Uh, maybe Volt can chip a little bit too, that'd be nice to see. Should we give the kill to Roy? <laughs> Volt is doubling Damas! Man, things you never see, man. Things you never see. We could just give the kill to Marcus and have him get the boss experience. Eh, nah, I don't think so. Let's, uh, let's go back a little bit. Let's, uh... Wait, where's my javelin? Oh. Uh, my javelin is all the way back here with Lance. Okay. I mean, he's gonna heal himself, and then he's gonna... He's not gonna go up to 16 HP, though. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna give this kill to Marcus. It's actually not as bad as you may think. Giving him some nice boss experience. I mean, so... The logic behind giving him this kill is that Marcus doesn't get any experience, except from bosses. What? What? That's so, so strong! So if you want Marcus to get a little bit... Okay, actually, he got next to nothing. I just own myself. Uh, yeah, don't do that. That's awful. <laughs> I swear to God, guys, I'm good at this game. Father! Lelina! Roy, is that you? Roy! 
Roy! I'm so glad to see you both. Thank goodness you're unharmed. Thanks for the rescue, Roy. Of course, Father. How is your health? Well, enough. I've uh, some life in me yet. But Roy, do you know why I called you back here? I'm to take over your role by leading the soldiers of Farah. We must join the rest of the Lycian army to defend our people. Exactly. As you know, Burn has commenced an invasion of Lycia. We are honor-bound to follow the ancient vows of our allegiance. Lycia needs every lord's army and we must oblige. Of course. I'm truly sorry to interrupt your studies and force you into this war. But I'm not well. I'm in no condition to lead an army. Father. Lord Elliwood, I'll go with Roy. My father leads Lycia's largest army, and I'm certain my magic will be of help to Roy. No, Lilina, you must return to Ostia. Why? Without Hector preparing for battle, there is no one sitting on the throne of Ostia. Oh, with Hector preparing, not without. It must be an easy feeling for the people to not have a sitting lord. As the daughter of the Marquess, you must take the throne until Hector returns. That will put the people at ease. Do you have any objections? No, my lord. Roy, I have arranged a contract with a group of mercenaries. You are to meet them at the border of Bern. Merlinus will accompany you. He is knowledgeable and experienced and should be of great help. Thank you for everything, father. Don't worry, my son. I have absolute faith in you. Fight bravely and show everyone who the next Marcus of Fair is. Yes, father. Boris, I have a favor to ask of you. You needn't ask, my lady. I will accompany Lord Roy in his travels and protect him with my very life. Thank you, Boris. Take care, Roy. I will. You too, Lelina. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the first part of Project Ember. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. I also would love to hear you guys' opinion on the opinions on the changes made to the gameplay, the balance changes, the units. I'd love to see like you guys discuss every little aspect of this hack. What do you guys think about it? What do you think about the design decisions? Are there some design decisions that you disagree with fundamentally so far? What do you think about two to three range bows and the impact that that will have on the game? And do you like the new Roy being able to keep up with horses? Uh, I'll certainly give my opinions on these things, but I need a couple more maps to play on before I can, like, have an opinion on it. Because, again, this was just one chapter. I It's not enough for me to actually formulate an opinion, so... But, but I'm loving this so far. I mean, it's FE6, and usually when I play, like, Redux patches of FE6, I get annoyed because I don't like the changes. But so far, I've loved all of them. The only one I'm a little bit iffy on is 2 to 3 inch bows. We'll see if that pays off or not. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, please leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.